All right, we are back with our third segment tonight. I've got Jeremy Breck, all the way from Sioux Falls, South Dakota, who's here to talk about landscaping tonight. <laughs> yeah. Let me, let me tell you the secrets on landscaping. You want to talk about shop time. <laughs> the man of all, all a jack of all trades there. He's He does lighting and he does landscaping. And you know what? My landscaping is going to have the best lighting you'd ever see. I, it's going to be like Maggio when I'm done. Just, let you, just, just saying. Just I'm excited. This will be fun. Looking forward <laughs> to seeing that. Oh, okay, tonight we're going to talk about talk about some ideas and thoughts with lighting for the summer, and that, that's going to take us in a variety of different directions. We could be talking about, well, you guys are going to have some questions about some lighting ideas and such, and Jeremy, you've been doing some things already this this season with your early weddings, and you've got some things planned and such, so let's talk about some things that are, are going to be, that, that you're hearing that brides are interested in and what's, been, what's going to be hot this summer for lighting at weddings. Yeah, for sure. So um, there's a lot of different ways you can really take wedding lighting. There is the atmospheric part of it, the ambiance part of it, and then there's the performance part of it. Uh, now, to me, there are some fixtures that allow you to do kind of a crossover, which we'll kind of talk about as we get deeper into this conversation. Um, but let's talk about, you know, the, I guess the wedding, the frilly type lighting, or more of those accent lighting. Um, and that's going to come down to monograms. Monograms have been around for a while. Um, the nice thing is the optics and the brightness of some of these LED ellipsoidals um, are getting so much better. And there's, again, there's a lot of things to be thinking about even when it comes to ellipsoidals. You know, what are the color temperatures? Um, you know, we've had many conversations about this, John. And, you know, I think every seminar that I talk about, we always talk about the Kelvin scale. Yep. Uh, the Kelvin scale is basically broken down to um, Kelvin, almost like a, a a color temperature so a warmer a warmer white is going to be a lower lower kelvin scale which is like that 35 3600 and then a cooler white is going to be at a higher kelvin scale right around the five to six thousand and um the biggest thing is when it comes to finding your ellipsoidal and matching the theme of that wedding is understanding their color temperatures are they using a lot of candles or is, is it more cool colors so when do you use a warm white when do you use a cool white um, there's filters you can put inside the cool or the warm whites to make them cool. There's warm filters to put inside cool LEDs. Um, so anything from an LFS 75 to the new Eve 100 Z, um, which, uh, Chauvet has launched the new Lipsoidal. It's a warm white, great fixture. Again, does some great things when it comes to, um, when it comes to monograms and then also textures, patterns, things like that. So that's getting more in the. I don't want to say theatrical, but more in the production style uh, when it comes to wedding ambiance. Um, and I think one of the most things that people see and probably the number one question that you get when a bride calls is, do you do up lighting? Mm -hmm. um, again, another thing that I put in every single aspect or every single um, presentation that I do is up lighting is like your foot in the door because a bride is going to ask, oh my gosh, do you do ceiling washes? Do you do textures and patterns? It's the question is, do you do uplighting? So um, to me, I think uplighting is one of the most common and one of the most re resourceful fixtures that you can utilize when it comes to wedding ambiance. You mentioned that brides are asking about that. Are you finding that brides are, are I mean, are you, I would take from what you just said, they're almost sometimes looking or looking for uplighting before they're looking for a DJ. Is that possible? You know, it depends. If you if you really focus on the entertainment aspects, then they're probably calling you for your entertainment. Okay. If they're calling you for, if they know you as a lighting company, they're probably calling you for your lighting. So which one becomes the upsell? Is the lighting the upsell or is the entertainment the upsell? Um, again, it just depends on how you market yourself, how you brand yourself, and how you position yourself in your market. So, um, you know, in, in our business, um, it's DJ, JR events and lighting design. So we kind of focus on the DJ aspect, but we add the lighting design um, title in there. So people understand that, yes, we're a DJ company, but we also focus on the lighting design aspect. It's, that'd be an interesting, and we should, we should uh, put a pin in that part for a future discussion, is what would be more effective to be a lighting design company that has the upsell of the DJ or versus I, I, I could, I think we should, we'll have to dig into that one at a future time. That's, that's a yeah. good, could be a good topic. Uh, for those of you out there watching on Facebook, um, 
we, I can't follow the chat, so if you're asking questions there, I won't be able to see that. You'll need to bounce over to uh, YouTube. The links are all in the, uh, the or description of the video, so you guys can check those out up there. So, so we've talked about uh, the, the different temperatures with your uplighting, and you were talking about monograms and such. Um, last week, I, I, I did a segment with uh, Jeremy, um, a different Jeremy, and he was talking about digital gobos. And I, not, I don't want to get into that part of it, but he was, because of using projectors, there's so much more you can do than a standard, just a, a gobo projector, just a plain one. And mm-hmm. of course, using a moving head, you can do so much more than you can do with just a basically static. Are you finding that when people are talking about monograms, that the idea of movement is appealing or that yeah. they're looking for that? Yeah, absolutely. Well, and again, most couples don't realize that, you know, they say, oh, you know, we'd like our names written on the wall or we'd like our our initials on the dance floor. So they don't understand it's a gobo or a monogram or anything like that. Uh, And again, I think that gives you opportunity because you can say, well, we can do a static gobo, which means it's just going or a static monogram, which is going to be one thing the entire night. And it's going to have one position Um, where, again, with Jeremy down in AZ, great friend, uh, great colleague does an awesome job and uh yeah he's he's very interesting to, to see yeah. his work um you know we do motion monograms as well we do digital monograms and i mean it's working with after effects and it's working with just motion backgrounds um you know for instance we just did a corporate event last week where uh, and i go i know this is getting off of weddings but it kind of shows you the potential mm-hmm. of double dipping you can utilize an ellipsoidal for a wedding and a corporate event and a birthday and a you know mitzvah and um, with the projectors, yeah, it does really open up opportunities and maybe upsells. Um, but I think there's always still something there when it comes to having a good ellipsoidal um, to do a nice, beautiful monogram on a floor or over a head table. Um, you know, projectors, yeah, again, there might be an upsell available there. And uh, as long as you know how to utilize programs and create some of those different motions and features, um, it's a great option for your couples. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think that it, and I, it's not like you can have one or the other. I think it's really multiple tools in your your toolkit because some rooms are going to be better and some couples are going to be better with different different options. Um, you mentioned earlier uh, having brides asking you about texture on the ceiling, and then you said, and that's uplighting. I've got some uplights, and they don't put texture on the ceiling. <laughs> I mean, right. uh, no. I mean, I was just looking to see. I have a flashlight, and that's what it, I mean. It's like a color light on the on the wall, or a color spot on it. When you're talking texture, what are you what are you referring to? Yeah. So um, one of the things, like if you look at one of my a couple of my favorite places to look for gobos um, is Roscoe's website and Apollo's website. Okay. And ApolloDesign.net. I think Roscoe is just Roscoe.com. Um, two great websites if you're looking for textures, patterns different gobo options. Um, You know, if you're looking for the moon, oh my gosh, we sell a whole bunch of moons um, because people always want that, you know, that dance and the moon in the the background. And uh, we have some great pictures, uh, you know, that we show couples and they're like, yes, I want that. Hmm. Uh, But if you go to those websites, you'll, you'll start going into finding these patterns that you're like, why would you ever use something like that? Um, And really what it does, it just kind of creates a contrast. So it's not just light in the ceiling. But there's actually, it's called breakup, um, which you don't ever want to tell a couple, a wedding, a wedding couple, that you're going to have breakup gobos at their at their wedding. Um, <laughs> That's a whole other story, buddy. Yeah. Um, but the, uh, the breakup patterns, again, what it does is it actually breaks up the light. So it kind of gives you these textures and these, these different gradients of light and just kind of creates some interest. Um, and, and again, you can also do that with glass gobos when you're using your moving heads, you know, just putting a little bit of a contrast in there, you'll be able to see ripples or waves of light. And that's exactly what those breakup patterns do is it just creates that texture into the ceiling or on walls. Uh, and again, we have some we have some great examples. I'll see if I can actually pull some up as we as we have our conversation. Yeah, yeah, that would be that would be interesting. I'd like to I'd like to see that. You were talking, of course, about using a gobo to do mm-hmm. that. Now, would you and I'm guessing you're having multiple like moving head fixtures that are shooting this up on the ceiling or, I mean, I can't imagine one gobo can do the whole ceiling of a, of a, um, a dance floor area. Sure. So there's a couple different things. Um, the first thing is like, we'll use, um, we'll use ellipsoidals a lot of the times into the ceilings. 
Um, otherwise, one of the things that we utilize if we don't need a breakup or a texture in the ceiling is um, we'll do a wash light up in the ceiling if we want to turn the ceiling a certain color. And uh, again, it just kind of creates a beautiful ambiance up there. Um, John, I'm going to show you a picture here. This yeah. is actually, um, I did a wedding with uh, Aldo Ryan out in New York, and this was at the Plaza in, in uh, um, right off of Central Park. Okay. And, and let me see if I can get it here. Okay. Can you see that? Yep. So right here, can you see my mouse? Yeah. Yep, yep, okay, so too. right here, what they did, or what, what happened was, um, by putting a certain uh, filter or a certain gobo in there, the filter actually makes the color, and then the gobo actually creates the texture of the pattern on the ceiling. Right. And um, if you just go look at, if you go look on those websites, you're going to see a lot of different textures and a lot of different pattern options uh, that are available. So how many Here. how many gobo projectors or devices did it take to make that? Because I mean I'm looking at that pattern and it seems to be. I I can't see a seam as we just lost it by the way. Oh, oh sorry. Um, I thought I could open up more images. Now can you see it? Yep, yep, yep. It's back. But okay. I'm looking and I really don't see. Maybe there's kind of a blurry spot by that second light fixture, the base of that second light fixture in there. Is that where they overlapped or? Yep. Yeah, exactly. And and basically what it comes down to is using the shutters that are actually inside of an ellipsoidal. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can overlap them and then just use that shutter and blend them just perfectly. So they actually look like they just keep continuing. Um, some of the breakup patterns, you will actually find um, that they have, they're, they're a repeat pattern. So you could technically put them side by side by side and it would look like a continual tree line. Um, and I'm going to see if I can find that. Well, let's let's go ahead. You look for those. We're going to uh, take a, a second here. We've got a couple of sponsors of tonight's show. Uh, oh, we're sure. going to run a couple of those. Jeremy, you can pull up a couple more pictures, and we'll be right back and jump into those. Sounds good. Hits USA from RPM. Our name says it all. Get the latest hits while they're the hottest. With Top Hits USA, you'll have the track for sure. Visit TopHitsUSA.com or call 800-521-2537 and get a free demo. DJ Event Planner will change the way you manage and run your business. Streamline all of your procedures and software into one easy-to-manage system. DJ Event Planner, the ultimate online planning tool. Once again, that's that's you know those are the things you can do behind the cameras, the scene and such. Yeah. All right, we're going to be. We, we, Jeremy went and he pulled out some family pictures here. These are some home movies, so you guys will get to enjoy Jeremy's yep. trip to you know the the, the state capital. <laughs> Not okay. much. What are we looking at? Um, yeah. So again, I was talking a little bit about um, just adding some textures and some patterns, and I mean textures and patterns come into the design. And really what I mean by that is it could be something very simple. It could be something very extravagant. Um, let's see. So let's start with this one. This was actually a corporate event. We did a whiteout event and you'll notice, um, you know, we just did these simple, almost like a pearl look to go along with it. And the gobos were just a lot of little circles 
to create that texture onto the draping that went around the, the uh, facility. Um, the next one here, this this is probably one of our favorites, and I think it's called Frill. Uh, I think Roscoe makes that one. Um, but we use it to frame in. We have the monogram right over the center. We have our totems on both sides. The up lighting kind of, kind of creates some of the accent. And then, uh, again, the, the texture, the pattern just kind of creates that fill. Stay, uh, stay on this that? one. Don't leave this one. Okay, okay, so you're using three different gobo projectors. Yep. And then uh, the totem, on the top of the totem, it looks like you've got a moving head fixture. Yep. And you are aiming that towards the head table, but you're aiming it towards the back of the couple. Am I correct? So right now, the dance is actually is, is going on right now. Okay, so then it's out on the dance floor. This right here, yep. Um, and it really comes down to positioning. So your lighting makes sense for the photographer, and it also makes sense for you as a performer. Right. So you have this scene. Imagine the photographer in front of the dance floor taking a picture of a full dance floor. This is, our, this is us taking pictures. Um, the, the photographer taking a picture of a packed dance floor or even the first dance for a bride and groom. And that's their backdrop. Yeah. Textures, these patterns, the, the beautiful monogram along with the up lighting. Um, and again, our up lighting, a lot of the stuff that we do is what we call digital wireless. Um, it allows us to use show express control all the lighting. So, I mean, you're actually seeing the lighting changing colors. It's changing mood. Uh, and to me, that's probably one of the most effective lights that uh, that you can bring to your dances um i actually let, let's come back to that here in a second yeah let's uh, let's talk about effects or or lighting without fog okay, okay. let's come back to that okay because that was a question i get quite a bit um when it comes to uh shot time and things like that so yeah. let's come back to that any other questions on this one no that's good that's good i think okay. i think you covered it so this is just a custom pattern that we made, um, that we had created. And again, it just went with the theme of this event. Um, just very feathery, you know, different, uh, different frill uh, type feel. And it, it was on all of the, and these are just curtains that we closed on this, uh, this event space. Um, so again, just had some custom things made. There's another view. And then here is, yeah. Here is kind of a close up. You can see these were actually like a tree breakup pattern. Um, this is one that I actually use quite a bit in some of my presentations uh, because it does show the power of a texture. And, you know, we talked about patterns repeating and, and kind of making the, the entire wall as, an, as opposed to making it look like here's a little bit and then here's a little bit more and then it's broken up and it's over here again. Um, it just makes it flow all the way across the room. So when you zoom out, you get something that looks like that. You have an entire tree pattern or a tree wall. Um, and the reason they wanted this was because they're very outdoorsy. Matt's a uh, hunter. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, let me let me show you their cake if I can pull that up here quick. Um, here we go. Here's our wedding cake. Oh, yep. And you can see this is the uh, browning, I believe. Is mm -hmm. that right? I, yeah. I think so. Yeah, I think it is browning. Yep. Dear. Uh, not that, uh, you know, copyrights or anything like that. I didn't make that. So, uh, but yeah, it was just a little cake topper that they had with the little browning deer. Um, and then this here, uh, actually here, their table for their cake was a tree stump. <laughs> um, and then later on, they actually had that tree stump made into a coffee table. Nice. So, yeah. That's kind of cool. Uh, yeah, so that is uh, that is some of the, uh, you know, just utilizing textures and patterns. And again, uplighting. Uplighting is your foot in the door. Um, so are you ready to go into the how do you light up a room when you then can't? We've got about enough time to talk about that a little bit to without fog. How much time do we have? We've got about just short of five minutes. Okay, cool. Um, so we have a lot of upcoming seminars um, this summer. I'll be at the DJ Expo. We're going to talk really in depth about this. Um, but I'm going to kind of give you a little bit of a teaser here. And then also um, coming up, IDJ Now, or IDJ Now, uh, gosh, IDGNA, we have, uh, we're going to do a, a easy um, uh, hour session where people will actually log on. It's going to be a free session that I'm putting on um, kind of the, the opening of Show Express uh, or the beginning of Show Express and how to program the freedoms um, to be most effective. And the reason I bring that up is because people always ask, well, how do you, how do you create a dance floor? How do you create energy with your lighting? 
when you can't use smoke or you can't use fog. Yeah. Uh, and it's easy. It really comes down to eliminate the idea of a beam and think about the, the end result of that light. So what is that light hitting in the long run? Is it hitting the back of the room or is it hitting your crowd or is it hitting the wall behind you? And then that's what now becomes your focal point. It's not the beam anymore. It now becomes, you know, what is the, what is the, the, the wall that it's hitting or the ceiling that it's hitting, you know, start utilizing your ceiling more, start utilizing the dance floor more, utilize the people who are on the dance floor more. Um, and then also utilize what's behind you. You know, the last discussion we had, John, was, you know, instead of always putting your lights where the DJ is, put your lights on the other side of the room and have them shoot back. So that way the crowd can actually feel and see what we always see all the time because For sure. where our lights are at. So it really comes down to the positioning and just knowing where you're aiming and making sure that it's creating what you want it to um, by using the ceiling, using the floor, using the walls around you. Um, because that's that's what you're showing off now. It's not the beams. And to me, that's why, again, we started this discussion talking about uplighting a little bit. And uh, I think that's why uplighting is so popular because it does and it can become part of your performance. And uh, it's a simple thing that's just a light up a wall. But again, you put some personality to it and it really becomes part of the dance. Jeremy, we've got some questions here. We're going to have to, we got to yeah. get to here in the chat room. Um, let's see. Um, the one that, the picture that you had of the white monogram, I was wondering if the, um, if that, uh, w because you had it right behind the head table, if you had that going during the dinner time, would that be, you know, blinding in the eyes of the people at the head table or how do you make sure that doesn't happen? Um, the biggest thing is the angle of what you're shooting it. So if it's actually above shooting down, sorry, if it's above shooting down, yep. most of the time, the angle of that lens isn't actually hitting them in the eyes. Um, are you going to have some interference? Yes, and, and that's one of those that's one of those cases where you might want to sit where the bride and groom are sitting and just make sure that when they stand up or when they uh, when they're sitting there eating that it's not going to be an issue. Um, and that's a great point. You want to make sure that you're not blinding them. Um, if you've ever been on stage and you've had a spotlight shooting you directly, you can't see a thing. Yeah, and that's one thing. Courtesy. Um, you know, be courteous to your, your couple and make sure that you are doing your homework and making sure that your lighting is not being effective to them. And, uh, you know, that, that you're not distracting them and they, you know, they want to see all their guests that are there. So don't blind them. Great question. Uh, next question was, uh, in the one photo there, uh, was there a Bose speaker in that photo? They were uh, the sound system. I wonder if he's not talking about the hunting one next to the um, table. Yeah. Uh, I think that was our, Whoops. Let me see if I can find that. Um, yeah. The one with the tree patterns. Uh, give me a second. I thought I had it. Oh, here. Nope. Not that one. Ah. Um, yeah. So basically, again, we kind of frame in the dance floor with our, um, with our sound and our lighting that's going to basically capture the dance floor um so we would have we would have a speaker on the side and actually here i can show you so here is here is our light column and then here is our speaker okay um, and again this was probably gosh this was probably two years ago i think is when this picture was from um but yeah we would we would actually go on both sides of the dance floor. So that way it wasn't, you know, and, and I personally would have been right here's my booth. Mm -hmm. So instead of having all the lighting and sound come from where the DJ's at, you have the lighting and sound come from the entire stage shooting on to the entire dance floor. Nice. So one -sided. Very nice. Very nice. We need to wrap things up, Jeremy. If people have any questions or, or have some comments and such and want to get a hold of you, what's the best way for them to do that? Uh, you know, there's a lot of different options. There is, uh, you can reach me at Jeremy at djjrshoptime.com. Um, if you are watching one of our shop time videos, you can actually just reply to that video. I'm really good now that it's connected to my phone at, uh, replying back to your questions. So, uh, and feel free. I mean, those shop time videos are free. I know John, you have them on the, uh, yep. the DJ website. People can go there. We're updating them all constantly. Uh, and I think there's just shy of 200 videos that are out there, actually just over 200 videos now. Um, but, you know, communication on YouTube, shop time or Jeremy at DJJerShopTime.com or just 
you know, send me a message on Facebook and I'll see if I can get back to you. Sounds great. Jeremy, thank you very much for your time tonight. And I think we've got, we'll be talking again a little bit later this summer. I think we had another night scheduled. I I look forward to it. We've got all sorts of good stuff. So, Jeremy, thank you very much, gang. We'll be back in just a few minutes with our DJ, the DJN crew here. And uh, the link is in the description below or in the chat. We'll see you in a couple minutes. Uh